What's up guys, if you're interested in getting sweet altars like these every month, you can do so by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series. I hope you all are doing very very well today. I am very excited because today we are opening up a pack of Dragons of Tarkir, which is not the most amazing set in the world if I'm going to be honest, but there are still some very very good cards in here. The Dragon Lords in particular are all very very powerful. Uh, lots of really cool stuff, so uh, as always we're going to go through this as if it is a pack one pick one scenario. So we'll go through every card, hopefully be able to figure out what our pack one pick one would be if we were drafting this. Uh, and hopefully we'll get to look at some of the cool mechanics and things like that that were in this set. So our first card here, Champion of Arashin, I hope I'm saying that correctly, is a 3-2 for three and a white with lifelink. Honestly, a pretty straightforward card. Uh, I don't think it's really all that good. It's a little bit low on the stats for a four drop. There's a lot more powerful things that you could probably do at four uh, in this set. Lifelink is nice. Uh, I don't like to bank on lifelink in limited unless there's like a defined archetype for it. Uh, and definitely Jeskai has a little bit of lifelink in it, but uh, Jeskai being the uh, the white, blue, red uh, con here. So, But regardless, it's not really the biggest theme in the world. It's just kind of a sub theme. So it's not super exciting in my opinion. Definitely not something I'm looking at first pick. Uh, Shambling Goblin is a 1-1 one, one for 1 black. When it dies, target creature and opponent controls gets minus 1, minus 1 until the end of the turn. Uh, I've actually found this to be a slightly above average 1 drop, so it's not amazing. It is just a 1-1 one, one for 1, but generally speaking, it's going to be able to take something with it. Uh, and you can usually trade up by blocking with this, and then when it dies, kill the creature it was blocking. Uh, and so I actually really like this. It's a bit of an aggressive, like kind of pseudo kill spell at one and i kind of like that uh obviously it's not going to get anything crazy but uh, it does actually help you out in combat and it does give your opponent something to think about if you have this on the field they do have to kind of block around it a little bit it's better than the champion in my opinion but it's still not a very exciting card but so uh well our next card uh is dragon fodder uh, so this is a sorcery for one and a red, and it's pretty straightforward. You put two 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens onto the battlefield. Uh, not like the most in insane card by any means, but at two, getting two power and two toughness on the field in the form of two different creatures uh, is actually pretty good. I like this a lot. Uh, the only thing that would make this better is if it was instant speed. Uh, if it was something like, uh, I believe, it Raise the Alarm in white does a very similar thing, uh, but it is at instant speed, and I find that obviously to be a huge, huge upside, but still, spitting out two goblins right on turn two is pretty good. I like it. Spread out that damage, get as much damage on the board as possible. This does everything you want it to at two, so... I like this card so far. It does seem like the pick. Uh, it's not a super exciting card by any means, but not bad. Uh, Glaring Aegis uh, is an enchant creature for one white. When it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls, and then the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus three. Um, honestly, you guys know my opinion on enchant creatures. This one is fine, but not amazing. Uh, being able to tap something down, pretty good. Uh, that does mean that you're probably going to get in for combat, at least on the turn that you play this. Uh, and then pumping up a little bit is fine. It's obviously a much bigger boost to toughness than power. I'd kind of prefer it to be the other way around. Uh, but tapping down a creature for one mana is actually pretty good. So where I would find this to be a reasonable pick is if you're in like a red-white really aggressive strategy, uh, maybe black-red or something like that as well, and then you're splashing in white, uh, or Mardu, I should say, in this set. Um, if you were really, really looking to be aggressive, this helps you be aggressive because it taps down the creature, which taps down a blocker, which means you're more than likely able to swing in, at least with a few creatures. Uh, and then obviously boosting up a creature is going to make it easier to swing in as well. So in that case, I think it's worth opening yourself up to that two for one. In general, not a super exciting card, though, not something I'm looking to uh, first pick by any means. Uh, Servant of the Scale is a 0, zero for 1 green. It enters the battlefield with a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. Uh, and when it dies, put X plus 1, plus 1 counters on target creature you control, where X is the number of plus 1, plus 1 counters on Servant of the Scale. So if you buff this up with a bunch of counters and then it dies, you actually get to move them over uh, to another creature you control, which is pretty good. 
Uh, that being said, nine times out of ten, at least in limited, I've found that a lot, of, most of the time you're going to end up just with one counter on it. It's probably going to die before uh, too much goes on on the board. Uh, and so for that reason, it's just kind of an okay one drop. Uh, it It's above average and that it leaves that 1-1 counter behind. Uh, and assuming you have another creature out, which you most likely will, uh, you'll be able to move that over, which is a good little buff, but it is just a 1-1 one, a one, one counter. It's not anything crazy. Uh, definitely not better, in my opinion, than Dragon Fodder. Uh, Durger Nemesis. Durger, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, it's a 6-5, five, 4-5 five in a blue. It has a Defender, and it has Megamorph. Really interesting mechanic. Uh, so you can play it face down as a 2-2 creature for 3 of any color. Uh, you can turn it face up at any time for its Megamorph cost, and then if you do, you put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. So the cost here being 6 in a blue, so you get to flip it. Uh, and then it gets uh, plus one, plus one counter, so it'll be a seven, uh, six, excuse me. Um, I find that this is very mediocre because it has Defender. <laughs> um, that's kind of a big downside. Megamorph is a really sweet mechanic, though. Uh, and on certain cards, it's insanely, insanely good. Uh, being able to surprise something out like that is really, really powerful. Uh, generally speaking, the rule was in limited uh, with this set. If you found yourself up against a morph uh, card, you want to kill the morph card pretty quickly uh, just because you have no clue what it could be. They all cost uh, three to play face down. And if they can flip them, they generally have some kind of very good, very strong ability. Uh, in this case, not really so much, but in some cases, definitely. Uh, I find this card, though, in general, to be very mediocre, not something I'm interested in. Uh, Fate Forgotten is an instant for two and a white. Exile, target, artifact, or enchantment. This is a very straightforward card. Definitely, definitely a sideboard card. Anything with artifact or enchantment hate tends to be more sideboard. Uh, but if you're in white and you happen to, uh, to late pick this, I think it's great. Just have access to, if nothing else. Uh, Mistoof Kirin is a 2-1 for 2 and a white. It has flying and vigilance and then also has megamorph. Uh, in this case, the cost is 1 and a white to flip it face up. Uh, this card is very, very good. Uh, I definitely think better than Dragon Fodder. Uh, the flying and vigilance just means it's evasive. It's going to be getting in for damage most likely. The megamorph means it can be getting in for more damage than you initially thought. So I like that for all reasons. Definitely a very solid 3-drop. It's not a game-changing card by any means, but it is a pretty solid one. Uh, Tygum's Strike is a sorcery for three and a blue. Target creature gets plus two plus zero until the end of the turn, and it can't be blocked this turn. And then it also has rebound, so if you cast this spell from your hand, exile it as it resolves, and then at the beginning of your next upkeep, you can cast this card from exile without paying its mana cost. So, it's sort of like, it's not really a combat trick, but it's a buff that happens twice just off of the one card. I still don't think it's really that great. Uh, it is fine. I think in, in Limited, it's definitely at its best just because you can sp throw it onto some big creature, make it unblockable, swing in, and then do the exact same thing the next turn. Uh, it is pretty powerful in that regard, but it's not super exciting. I don't think that this is a card that I would be looking to play very often. I don't know if that's incorrect or not. I drafted this a little bit, not a ton, so I don't. I never got the opportunity to play with this. Uh, so tell me in the comment sections if I'm wrong, but I don't think that this is the most amazing card in the world. Uh, Summit Prowler is a 4-3 for 2 and 2 red. Vanilla creature, not super exciting. You would take this for curve consideration, obviously, if you need some 4 drops. This is okay. It's a 4-3 for 4, so it's a little understated, but it's not terrible. Uh, but it just doesn't do anything other than be a 4-3. And that's not super exciting in draft. It doesn't do that much. But again, if you really need that curve consideration, which is one of the most important things you can do in draft, definitely take it. Uh, it's definitely worth it in that case. Uh, our first uncommon here is Sarkon's, Sarkon's Triumph. Excuse me, is an instant for two and a red. Search your library for a dragon creature card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and then you shuffle your library. Uh, this is, I think, fine if you have enough dragons to make it worth it. You don't want to play this if you've only got one or two dragons. If you've got, like, five dragons, might be worth it because you're not necessarily going to be drawing all five dragons at the same time. So it's nice to be able to pull out the ones that you need. If you have a dragon lord or some really big payoff dragon, definitely becomes a much more desirable card. However, you don't want to take this card before having the dragons. I just don't think it's worth it. It ends up being a dead card if you don't have enough at all. So I don't like this card very much unless you're already there with the dragon stuff. 
Uh, Draconic Roar is an instant for one in a red. As an additional cost to cast it, uh, you can reveal a dragon card from your hand. It deals three damage to target creature, but if you revealed a dragon card or control a dragon as you cast it, it deals three damage to that creature's controller as well. This is just really, really efficient removal. Uh, not only is it three damage at instant speed, but potentially uh, it's three damage to that creature's controller as well, all for the same cost. Obviously, it gets a lot better if you have the dragons, but you don't actually have to have them to make this good. This is just really efficient regardless. So honestly, so far, I think this is the pick. Uh, it's just such a powerful, uh, efficient removal spell that it's really hard to go wrong. Uh, Orator of Ojitai. Uh, it's a 0-4 for 1 and a white. As an additional cost to cast it, you can reveal a dragon card from your hand. It has defender and flying, and when it enters the battlefield, if you revealed a dragon card or controlled a dragon card as you cast it, you get to draw a card. Uh, this is fine. It's a stall card. Uh, you can play it out early. It's going to be able to block no matter what, which is great. Uh, and then potentially draw you a card. Also pretty good. I think the roar is better. Uh, it's just more aggressive. Uh, this, assuming you have some dragons, though, is actually a very good card. I think in general it's fine, but not amazing. Uh, it's still just a 0-4 defender, so it is just a stall card. But drawing cards off of stuff like that is very nice. Uh, and then our rare is Illusionary Gain. So 3 and 2 blue for an enchant creature. You control the enchanted creature. And then whenever a creature enters the battlefield under opponent's control, attach Illusionary Gains to that creature. This is a bit of a risky card, so if they've got something powerful out and you can win the game on the spot, it's amazing because you can steal that, swing in with it, do a lot of damage, it's great for that. However, it's very easy for the opponent to just play something very low-costed uh, and then not play anything else uh, if they really don't want to. So it's a little bit scary, like they have to play around it, which is a problem for them, but um, it, it's also pretty easy to play around. Uh, that might be an incorrect assessment, but that's just kind of my thoughts on it on the onset. I didn't get to play with this one, so I don't know if it's amazing or not. Uh, but in my opinion, I don't think it would be that good. I would rather just have Dracon Draconic Roar. Uh, please, of course, let me know in the comments section if you feel that's incorrect. But uh, I do think that I would just pick the Roar here. I think it's the safest pick. It's just it leaves you open. It's efficient. Uh, removal is always very, very important. So that's definitely what I would pick. Feel free again to, to let me know in the comments section below if you disagree. I'm happy to talk about that. But if you liked this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.